that some of the major oil marketing companies have adjusted upwards their prices. One of the market leaders, Shell, is selling a liter of petrol and diesel at 5 cities, 32 pesos. Now, this represents more than 2% increase in the prices of the petroleum products. Joy Business is learning that other OMCs will follow suit to adjust their prices upwards uh, in the coming hours. The adjustment has been influenced by rising prices of finished petroleum products on the international market. The increment could also trigger increase in transport fares. Now, the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers says the development makes a strong case for government to remove some taxes on fuel to caution consumers. Meanwhile, the Institute for Energy Security is calling on government to, as a matter of urgency, provide the necessary facilities to offload the excess gas that is being produced to ensure value for money. According to a study by Energy Think Tank, the natural gas subsector is rapidly becoming a fiscal burden to the country due to poor energy strategies. And therefore, there shouldn't be any delays in building the necessary and relevant infrastructure to offtake processed domestic gas. Uh, Fritz Moses is research fellow with the IES. He joins me for a discussion on this. Uh, before we talk about this, Fritz, I just want to uh, pick your thoughts on the increase in fuel price, prices and uh, the impact, as we've seen, um, that it could even translate in an increase in transfer fares. Just uh, for the benefit of our viewers, put all of that into context for us. All right. Um, thank you, Darrell. Um, yes, as we, as we, uh, we have already witnessed that um, some of the owners are, uh, are showing up their prices for fuel or the various um, petroleum um, products. Mm. Um, this influence it definitely is because of the rise in, on international markets, and uh, that rise has been occasioned by the, the 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 continuing tightening of the market, but also the fact that um, um, the fact of the U.S. Um, issues or power or energy issues that's currently happening in Texas that's affecting their also their, their production. And so yes, we, we, that has definitely been affecting um, consumers over the year. I mean over the months, uh, we've seen that increase uh, increments uh, being substantial from 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 January to date. And so for transport fares, I believe that um, with the current over ten percent increase in the in the transport in the Product space, we think that there will be that um, 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 transport increment. I mean, we had sorry that they were going to increase, but um, had to make mm. the decision and, and wait to what this market should. And then you try to continue to increase as as um, as we have already witnessed. All right, Fritz. Uh, so let's talk about why we really called you um, to do with the offtake of gas and the problems that we are having at, at this point. What's the background to this story? All right. So um, we uh, we analyzed data from the uh, from PIAC. Also, we got data from the Ministry of Finance and the Petroleum Commission. And basically, what we are seeing is um, is an uptick in the natural gas production in the various fields. And so, essentially, we have three um, um, fields in Ghana. That's the um, Sankofa Jinami. Um, that's AGN and then the TAIN and then the Jubilee Fruit. But um, for out of these three, you have two producing um, natural gas that's both associated and non associated gas. And we realized that um, for the period, the first half of 2019 and compared to the first half of has seen a considerable increase of about 60% in natural gas production. That also has meant that uh, we are seeing a rise in the debt owed by um, the GNPC to the various um, uh, GNGC to GNPC. And this is because uh, of our inability to take the, the gas that's produced due to the take or pay clauses that we have in the contract that was signed between um, the GOG and the various um, uh, 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 producers. And we also seen that um, there's going to be an increase in, 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 in production exploration in the, in the various fields uh, with the contract being um, extended by to our kind of and all of that. And, these figures that we are seeing, uh, for example, in 2019, we saw our 2020 figures for 20 for the production of um, natural gas was about 160 million cubic um, standard cubic feet. Right. And um, that in itself costs, is costing the state about $54 million um, for the excess that we are not able to use. And so we think that this this actually is not a good a good um, right. step or it doesn't help the Ghanaian economy because essentially what it does is it, it results in, in, in an increase in tariffs. That's basically what the natural gas that we are providing is used for, for the power um, industry, for the various IPPs to produce the power that we need. So in the event where we are providing 
we are buying um, this gas that we are producing okay. from these um, fields, and we are not able to also use them. We are paying for the excess that we are using. Then it means that we are costing, we are going to pay more for gas that we are using, essentially. And that's uh, so much money we are losing there. Um, so my final question, what relevant infrastructure do we need to offload the excess gas? All right, thank you. So um, you realize that at the beginning of the year, we heard that the government had had um, procured or, or finished processes that would bring in the RFU, that's like the regasification floating unit from um, China, and that we're going to import gas to um, regasify and use in our natural gas. We think that that's actually not the right step. Instead of, instead of like, importing more gas and um, regasifying it and using them at the local level, we should rather look at getting a liquefaction um, um, unit. That would rather export. Look at um, liquefying, liquefying the gas that we have here. Mm. liquefy it and transport it across um, either vessels, even if, if it is through pipelines that um, as a gas unit, um, to other countries. We already have the West African gas pipeline. We can also use that means to export to other countries. We should rather look at exporting rather than importing more gas because we already have more excess. And with the data that we are receiving from the previous, for the past four years and looking into the future, you will see that demand may not necessarily increase as we'd expect, but then the exploration is going to increase because now there's coming on board several fields and several production areas. That would mean that we are going to increase production, but then we are not seeing the commensurate demand increments. And so we should look at exporting to other countries that also need gas. I mean, Ghana's regasification unit is a, it has had been on the on the tongue of several other countries. So we should okay. look at rather exporting to them and gaining more revenue. I mean, that sense. And, and, and we believe that that in extent sense also um, built the African continent um, confidence in in handling its own affairs and of course in also um, um, sharing what we have with our neighbours and uh, those who need it on the continent. Fritz Moses, thanks so much for your time uh, tonight. Thank you for speaking with us. Enjoy your weekend.